you guys already asked for it. You guys wanted to see the bike. So I brought the bike back from the shop and it's right here. Uh, let me guys tell you first before I actually decide to do anything with it. I don't think I'm gonna be fixing it. It's honestly too much work and it's too painful to look at. Uh, I think the bike is just gonna be either parted out or sold. But yeah, to not keep you guys waiting, let me just show you pretty much the damage that's done to the bike. And it's a high side or kinda, I don't know, bike pretty much flipped forward, tumbled for like at least 100 feet. It was, uh, I'm still debating if I wanna like upload the footage because I do have it. But we'll see, let me know if you guys want to see that footage. So yeah, pretty much. So R1, the H2, and whatever's left from the V4, which is not much to be honest. This side is not as bad. Okay, hold on, let me try to get up. Clear clutch is good, exhaust only scuffed up but the entire subframe is actually gone. Like nothing. Front is destroyed. Front wheel is actually good. But the left side is completely destroyed. The frame is good. The engine is good. The swing arm is good. Tank is majorly bent, but gladly it was not leaking. So, I might put a list of pretty much like all the parts that the bike needs, uh, but I'm not really, it's just, it's gonna be at least $10,000 to fix the bike. And I'm not really sure if I wanna put that much work and effort into it, just, cause look, if you put $10,000 into the bike and then after that you discover you have more issues for whatever reasons, this bike has like two ECUs because of all the electronics and all that. And then if I have more problems then, then that's just not a good day. You know what I mean? And it's a lot of money wasted. So that's why I'm trying to pretty much either part it out or pretty much sell it as a whole. And probably sometime in the future, get another V4 or possibly an S1000. You guys should let me know in the comments which bike I should get next. Obviously I can't ride for two months. So it's gonna be a minute uh, till I do that, but yeah, this is just a little kind of like update clip on the V4. Sad. Oh, let me let me try to start for you guys. I actually have the key right here. I'm not actually going to turn it on, but you guys can see. The screen doesn't work. The front lights work though. So, there's definitely some parts that can be salvaged from this bike. That engine alone is worth about $7,000. The exhaust is another three. That's all used, of course. Uh, the swing arm is another like 1.5K. The front Marchesini wheel, that's another $1,000. So there is bike in parts is probably can bring back like 10 to $15,000. But honestly, I don't want to deal with that hassle. I'm just trying to sell it all together for maybe like seven eight thousand dollars just to not have to deal with parting it out especially because i'm pretty much handicapped right now uh but yeah it's a lot of work and uh, i think the plan is to sell it sadly we're not going to be fixing it unless let me know maybe maybe i might consider if you guys really would like to see that content because i thought about it and like doing kind of like a rebuild series that would be interesting it's a little risky because i don't know like how the bike is going to be later on and how much more money it needs because just the primary stuff to get it going and all that with labor is about 10,000. You know, I don't know about any like hidden stuff and the bike did tumble and I did go down like really fast. So I pretty much let me walk you through like what happened in the accident and then maybe later on in the future I'll show you the actual footage. Uh, but uh, I was taking an exit off from the freeway, going a little too fast. Uh, I thought I was completely fine. Uh, the bike was fishtailing, but I'm kind of used to that and then like usually fishtails and when, when I get down to like the speed that I'm comfortable with, I start leaning going into the turn. But it was dark at night. I had a dark tinted visor, which I definitely don't recommend wear, like using anymore at night. Uh, that's one of the like big things that really messed me up because I couldn't see the turn. I couldn't see how aggressive it is. Uh, so definitely like a big lesson learned over there. 
obviously I wasn't wearing much gear. I always wear my uh, gauntlets, uh, boots, and helmet, which did help a lot, to be honest. My helmet is pretty messed up, as you guys saw in the last video. Uh, but yeah, no jack or anything. That's why I got all this road rash. So definitely going to be a little more cautious about wearing gear in the future. Uh, I already have all the gear. It's just I'm too lazy with it, to be honest, which is, yeah, I get it stupid, but, you know, it's hot and whatever. Uh, but yeah, so like I went into the turn a little too fast, bike fishtailed, and somehow, some way, the bike like fishtailed, and then instead of like slowing down more, it just caught back traction. And then when it caught traction again, it actually launched me over. And like just the process of me crashing, I was just like in denial. I was like, no way this just happened. Cause like I didn't think I was crashing, you know? I was like, I completely thought I was in control. Uh, nothing nothing was wrong i did go into the turn a little too fast but it's nothing that like i was i was like oh like i'm about to crash you know i thought i was completely fine and all of a sudden like the bike somehow caught traction and just like launched me forward and like we went both me and the bike tumbling for about like 100 feet luckily i didn't hit the rail if i did it could have been way way worse i was like a few feet away from the rail so glad i guess i made it out alive uh yeah, so that's pretty much it. Just a little update on the bike, the accident itself. Still unsure if I want to release actual footage. It's also dark. You're not going to be able to see much, but I don't know. The police where uh, ambulance was, was called, police were there. They towed the bike and all of that. So it was a long process. I had to also like pay to get the bike released from the towing uh, place took it to the shop to get inspected and all that and that's when they gave me like an estimate on the price and yeah that's pretty much it just a little update i'll let you guys know if i mean you guys will know if i'm gonna release the footage of the actual crash uh i have some more old content that i'm also gonna be filming and making uh but other than that i don't know I'm, i think i'm just gonna be filming a bunch of like reviews in the garage uh, stuff that I can film that's hopefully entertaining for you guys since I'm all messed up until I heal up. And by the way, there's a squad of people just posted out here. They actually helped me because since I'm handicapped, I couldn't, we had to like load the bike up onto the uh, truck and load it, unload it from the truck and all that. And obviously I can't do none of that. So the boys here did pretty much all the work. Thank you for the help, guys. You don't, you don't have to be no so problem. silent anymore. <laughs> they're all like, I told them to be quiet so I can film, so now they're all silent and awkward. But yeah, this is what's left of the V4. Doesn't even look like a bike anymore, if you ask me, but yeah, sadly didn't get to enjoy it that much, but. On the back tire. Oh yeah, the rear wheel. Thank you for that. So yeah, the rear wheel is like pretty bad. It's like completely bent. Sorry, it's like hard for me to move. I'm like moving on this like chair rolling around. But yeah, like you guys can see, radiator is bent over there. Uh, the left fork is just destroyed. And yeah, the, the those are also Marchesini forged uh, magnesium wheels so those are like really strong and light wheels and the fact that it's bent this badly it's just kind of crazy I'm glad the exhaust is only like scratched up you guys can see it's only scuffed up same thing with the swing arm the casing over here so mo most of like a lot of the big parts are just scuffed up but then the whole subframe literally is just disappeared it's just gone and the bike is fixable it's just too much work and that's why i think i just want to sell it i think uh and I'm, I'm still undecided about it but i think that's the move for now especially because i can hopefully when i heal up i can get back on the r1m in the h2 and uh yeah so ducati no more the flag is staying so maybe in the future i will i do love the v4 it's an amazing bike it's a lot of fun so I might get another V4 in the future, not completely sure about it yet, but I do love the bike and it is the last kind of like piece to my dream garage. So I might get that, but I might also get an S1000, very undecided. I'm gonna take a slow recover, ride my other bikes for now and then we will figure that out in the future. Also for the people that are asking, the bike actually was not insured. 
sadly. So I actually lost all the money spent on it, which was, I bought the bike for 25K, I spent another $3,000 for parts and labor to add on it. So $28,000, all gone. Hopefully if I get like maybe eight out of selling the bike as is, I'll, I'll get 8K back. So still losing about 20,000 US dollars. Not fun, but hey, I made it out alive, so whatever. And uh, yeah, that's another lesson. Full coverage, guys, like right away. So I was delaying because I was shopping around between like different companies to get the best deals uh, for insurance. And I, I, I've been riding for too long and like, you know, I don't do a lot of canyon riding. So I'm like, oh, I'm, I'll be fine. Like I'm just shopping for deals while I have liability until I get full coverage. And then, um, you know, shit just happens like you never expect it. So guess better be safe than sorry. For all of you guys, don't wear or don't use really dark tinted visors at night because it does limit your visibility, especially like going into like unknown uh, roads and all that stuff. And also uh, get full coverage. I guess those are like my biggest two advice that I can give you guys. Uh, obviously, yeah, you should wear gear, but you do what whatever you want to do. I can't tell you to like wear gear. You know, you guys saw what happened to me. If you guys want to avoid this road, gear is not going to protect you from breaking bones. But if you want to, I guess, limit road rash and all that shit, then yeah, you probably should wear gear. But definitely wear a helmet. My helmet was really bad, and I walked out with like a minor concussion. So. A helmet is highly recommended. You guys should definitely wear a helmet. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I keep remembering stuff that I want to talk about, but for the most part, I mentioned everything. Thanks for the boys for helping no with the bike and all that. And yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.